Hey kids, welcome back. It is another day to learn about this word, new, right? We have talked about two stories so far that have to do with the idea of becoming new. It's still January, still kind of the start to a new year, and so this is an awesome opportunity to think about what does it mean to be new. So to review about new, we had two stories, right? The first story had to do with this man named David. And David was the king of Israel, who pretty much was a very godly king who loved the Lord and obeyed him. But one time, well, more than once, but one time he didn't obey. And what happened? Well, we talked about this story when David disobeyed God, sought a woman out that wasn't his wife, killed the man who was her husband, and the man Nathan, who was a prophet, came to tell a story to David and talked about this story about a man who had one little sheep and then a man who had a whole bunch. And this man decided he wanted to take that one little sheep away. And when they told the story, guess what? David got actually very angry. He said, what's going on? Why? What? We need to take care of this. This needs to, this is not right. And Nathan said, you are that man. And right away, David knew that he had sinned against God. And what did he do? He repented. Remember that word? Repent. And so we talked about being new as one of the ways to do that is to repent of your sin. So when we see our sin, we turn away from our sin and turn back to the Lord, turn back to God. And through Jesus, we are able to become new. Then we went to a different story. The second story we talked about was a man named Naaman. And Naaman was a very powerful general from a different country than Israel. He's not a part of God's big family right away. And Naaman had that disease called leprosy. And the word that we learned about with Naaman was humility. Say that, humility. Being humble means you often live here thinking you're important, but humbling yourself means, wait a minute, I'm actually not that important in God's eyes. I am I, I'm small. I am weak. I need the Lord, right? I need God. And so the whole story of Naaman was his process of knowing how much he needed God. In fact, the story has so many little spots where it talks about humility. He was humble enough to listen to his one servant girl. He was humble enough to go to Elisha, the prophet, and then his servant actually came out to talk to him. So he was humble enough to listen to him, but he was not really that excited about what the servant had to tell him. But then thirdly, he was, he was humble enough to listen to his own servants who said, hey, hey, what are you talking about? If you were told to do something incredibly important and strong and bold, you would do that. Why won't you just go into a river and dip down seven times? So finally, he humbled himself and went into the Jordan River, dipped down seven times. And that seventh time, what happened? He came out clean and new. And being clean and new reminds me of the verse that we talked about. Do you remember that one? This verse is found in Psalm 51, which is the exact passage of scripture, almost a song that David wrote right after he realized what he had done and was repenting. And so it says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Unfailing love. It means a love that will never stop. It will keep going. It's going to never, it's not, no matter what you do, God will not stop loving you. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. It's a beautiful picture of becoming new, right? And it's so nice because it reminds us, especially when we see some snow during the winter, that this is one of the ways that God cleanses us and changes us and makes us clean and new in him. And it's only because of Jesus that we can have that. In fact, that's when we're going to think about our next story is after the, in the New Testament. So those first two stories were in the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, we know the story, I hope, that when Jesus died, he died on the cross for our sins. This is how we can repent and how we are given forgiveness, right? And then amazingly, awesomely, incredibly, he rose from the dead. He defeated death and he rose from the grave. And this actually brings about a whole new idea of what new means, right? So when he rose from the dead and defeated death, we have new life in Jesus. Well, when this happened, people started following Jesus all over the place. And it became this idea of called the way. People were following the way, which meant they were following Jesus. And 
A lot of people who heard that there were these people following Jesus did not like it. And so there was actually one man who was named Saul. And this man, Saul, we're going to talk about today because he was a man who did not like Jesus, did not want people to follow Jesus because he thought it was wrong. He thought this was not according to even what God wanted. He didn't believe Jesus was God. Yet, this is the exciting part is that Jesus decided to meet him and change him and make him new. And so that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, hey, Lammy, welcome back. So good to see you. I know, right? So good to see you, too. I know, right? Oh, wait. Are you telling me that you have puppets that yep. you're going to do? You oh, have puppets, yep, really? Yep, yep. Oh, yes, I have Oh, my goodness, that is so crazy. That would be awesome. You want to do that with the, with the kids today again? Can I? Oh, I want to, I want to, I want to. Can I? Yeah. Well, then let's do it. All right. Thanks, Mr. Andrew. Hey, I have a puppet show to do for this story. It's called With Saul and Paul. And it's, it's, it's a great story. And I just can't wait. I think I have everything ready. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh, Jack, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Have you been? Oh, yep, yep. I'm great. I'm great. Hey, Lammy, I've been hearing that you're doing some puppet shows with the kids and giving all the stories. Well, I wanted to help. Can I just do some things? Oh, sure, Jack. You can help me. Look, there's the puppet down there, and, the, and we just, you know the story? The story's all about Saul. Oh, yeah, 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 I know that. Yeah, that's it. Yep, yep, that's it, that's it. Come on, let's go, let's go. Okay, here we go. So, this is how it goes. One day, there was a, a man named Saul. Here he is. And so Saul was a man who said he followed God, but he didn't believe in Jesus. Because he thought Jesus was not the one who was truly God. And so all the people who believed in him, in Jesus, they would get together and they would pray. And so they would come together and they would worship Jesus and Paul would not be happy with them. And in fact, he got so upset, he would put people in jail. Let's find that one. You got it? Oh, yep, yep, yep. There it is. Yeah, it was so bad. He would put people in jail, and then he would even sometimes hurt them. Hey, Jack, get back down here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, what happens next here, Lammy? Well, then, one day, here's Paul. You got Paul? No, I got Paul. All right, you got the other guy. Okay, so Paul meets up with... Is this right? Oh, um, head down. Okay, sorry, sorry. So... One day, Paul, who was named Saul first, goes to the leaders, the Jewish leaders, and says to them, he wants to go to Damascus, and he wants to go find more of these Christians and put them in prison. And so the guys say, Okay. Is that right? Um, Oops, sorry. Yes. So then, Paul is going down the road to Damascus. And guess what happens next? There was a bright light. And all of the other people who were going with him doo, 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 couldn't see the bright light. But then, who came? Oh, I know, I know. It was Jesus. And Jesus said to Paul, 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 why are you, why are you hurting me? And Saul, uh, he said, well, uh, who are you exactly? That's right. And so then... Jesus had to tell them that he was the one who was, who was, who was, who was the one that he was really hurting because Paul was hurting the Christians. And so Paul, that's what happened. He was blind. That's right. So then we have that this, this, this poor Paul. He's blind on the road. His name was Saul, Paul, whatever. And so the guys who were with him said, oh no, what are we going to do? Oh, sorry, I messed up. I was standing up on that. Okay, and so then he was blind, and they took him to a man named Ananias, and Ananias then healed Paul. And that was the story. And Jesus said, I want you to be part of my big family, Paul. Oh, no, this is great, right, right? Yeah, and so he did it. Paul followed Jesus, and it was all because of that bright light. Wow. That's incredible, Lammy. Wow, wow. I'm going to tell all our friends about this. I think they should be part of our puppet show, too, you think? Well, okay. Well, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, anyway, that's the story, Pastor Andrew. It's all about how Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus. 
Wow, that was incredible, Lammy. I love how you and Jack, you got him back there too, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jack, by the way.、Uh, I guess he left already. Hey, But thank you. I think you did a great job with the story. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was great. Well, and guess what? I just want to wrap it up just a little bit because you told it all. But the idea that Saul met Jesus on the road in a bright light, sometimes that makes us think, oh, we can only really believe if we see, right? Yeah, that seems like it's about But right. But guess what, Lammy? What? And it's not about that. In、what? fact, so many places, even in letters that Paul wrote, he says it's more about faith. Than it is about sight. So it's actually more of a blessing to believe and have faith in Jesus when we don't actually see him with our eyes. Wow, that's crazy. I know. Sometimes we get caught up in that though, but it's really about faith without sight. Now, Paul became blind, right? And、yep. it was only because he was blind for a little bit that he actually could see. Wow. Isn't that funny? That's so funny. Like, yeah. So the, the story then goes that Paul writes so many of these good letters to people and shares this love of Jesus and what it means to follow Him and ultimately what it means to become new. That's right,、yeah. new. That is so good, Lammy. So hey, I just have a quick verse to share with the kids and then we'll be done. Okay. You want to stick around? Well, I'm gonna go get Jack. Okay. I'll go. I'll be back. But I'll see you later. Bye, bye, kids. Okay, Lammy. Well, I'll see you later then. So let's take a look. So in the Bible, and in fact, a letter that Paul wrote in Second Corinthians, he starts out actually saying this. He says, "For we walk by faith and not by sight." Isn't that an incredible thing? Especially since Paul had this amazing vision. But then later he says, "This is exactly what it means to be new." And it's found in Second Corinthians five seventeen, and it says, "Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come; the old has gone, and the new is here." Wow! Isn't that incredible? I mean, to think about the idea that Jesus is all about making us new, and yes, it's through repentance, it is through humility, but it's also through faith. And when we have the faith of understanding who Jesus is, that He died and He rose again, and we become people who are in Christ, that means we have said, "Jesus, you are my King, and I want to submit to you. I want to live for you. I want everything about my life to be in you." Then this is what happens: Jesus does make us new. He sends us the Holy Spirit, and He says, "Out with the old, in with the new." Right? And so God actually lets us become part of His big family. Through Jesus, so isn't that amazing? Thank you so much for for being with us. Thank you again, Lammy, for sharing that awesome puppet presentation again. I mean, I didn't know that Lammy was so good at puppets, but I want us to remember this verse. And hey, I actually want to pray for us right now. So, if, pray with me, will you? Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends out here, the children who are watching this show. I pray that you will help them understand what it means to be new. Lord, we've talked about repentance. We've talked about humility, and today we're talking about faith and sight. Lord, I pray that as we just continue to think about what it means to be new, you will help the children to truly want that. That they will say, oh, "I want my old life. I don't want those things. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to live for myself and think about those things in a way that would just be me being the king." But I want to live for you, Jesus. I want you to be king, and so I pray for my friends, and I pray for all of us that you will make us new in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next week. 